Broadcasting live from our studio in Boston, Solutions Review is proud to showcase Cohesity in the Solution Spotlight, a unique online event for industry professionals. I'm Doug Atkinson here at Solutions Review and welcome to this Solution Spotlight featuring Cohesity and focused on how to protect against ransomware with secure cyber vaulting. Ransomware is the fastest growing type of cyber crime. Gartner reports that by 2025, 75% of IT organizations will face one or more attacks. So today, we'll take a deep dive into a new approach to ransomware protection called cyber vaulting, where organizations make an immutable copy of critical production data and isolate it, allowing you to recover easily if hit by a cyber attack. And we will look specifically at Cohesity Fort Knox, a cyber vaulting solution that provides an always available secure copy of data in the cloud that provides an additional layer of protection against ransomware while simplifying recovery operations. And to walk you through the Cohesity Fort Knox solution is Edwin Galang, Cloud Solutions Architect. Edwin, thanks for being with us. Hi, Doug. I'm excited to be here. Um, happy to have a conversation with you about our solution. Yeah, no, this is great. Um, we've been looking forward to it. I don't think there's probably a more popular topic at Solutions Review than how to protect against ransomware. That's probably universal. Uh, this isn't a nice to have. This is a, what we call a have to have. Um, and so we're looking forward to you digging in. Before we do, though, um, I, I just want to, you know, learn a little bit more about yourself. You have a, you have a, a great uh, LinkedIn profile. It looks like you've been on both sides of the of the equation, uh, both uh, as an end user and as a as a uh, solution advisor, can you can you tell us a little bit about your journey and how you've how you've ended up at Cohesity? Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I've done you know I'm aging myself here. I've been in the industry for 25 years. You know, been an admin. I remember those days of like Friday nights working with patching, but then moved to professional services and DR, um, and I've been at Cohesity for five plus years around five years, I should say. And um, yeah, just the evolution of, of seeing both sides. And, and obviously, like you said, the top of mind is your ransomware and how it's evolved within those 25 years I've been in the industry. Well, we certainly have been tracking Cohesity um, for a long time here at Solutions Review. And, uh, and I think our audience is going to really appreciate the presentation you're going to share. Before you get to that, though, I want to let everybody know that if they have any questions to send them in, I'll gather them all up here and, uh, and save them for the end where Edwin and I can do a little Q&A. Um, but uh, otherwise, Edwin, I will give you the floor. I know you have some slides you want to present and then you're going to dig into a demo. Uh, and then I'll join back up with you in 40 minutes or so. Sounds great, Doug, and I appreciate it. So hi, everyone. Um, as Doug said, I'm going to go ahead and start uh, uh, my presentation. And as Doug said, I'm going to start with a short presentation, just kind of going over you of the solution and, and where the industry is, and then go into a, a deep dive demo. And then back to Doug when we have a conversation about, you know, any key question and questions and answers. So one of the things I like the level set is, this is top of mind concern is kind of Doug talked about is there's a lot of concern. Ransomware is the top of mind, but there's other, you know, kind of things going on in the industry that, you know, customers and you know, <clears throat> the industry is seeing. The biggest thing is complexity. You know, um, one of the bigger things is complexity is, you know, a lot of time is spent doing those weekly, you know, managing and maintaining the infrastructure. So 40% of the time, a lot of <clears throat> multiple multi-point solutions makes it really challenging to manage, you know, operations. And the second part is cost, right? You know, what we've seen is, um, you know, 7% of businesses cut the IT budget. You know, they need to build for ransomware, they need to build for solutions, but they have less money to do it. Um, so that's really challenging uh, for organizations. And as Doug talked about the risk with ransomware, and you know, this is a really fascinating statistic is, you know, they, you know, um, every 11 seconds today, they say they estimate that a organization is going to be hit by ransomware. Now, think about that for a minute, every 11 seconds, so five every minute. So in the next hour that we're talking, about 300 organizations will be by, hit by ransomware. That's a staggering number, if I think about it. And they're thinking in, you know, seven years from now, that's going to five times as many. So you're going to have five times more organizations. So the thought is, you know, it used to be kind of, you know, maybe it'll happen. It's not when it's, you know, it's not if it's going to happen, it's when and, and being prepared for that is, is what organizations need to look at. Um, our, the U.S. government CISA um, organization has 
published, you know, shields up how to defend your data, how organizations can proactively and you know, manage, you know, reduce the likelihood, but also be prepared. And that's the thing that they are emphasizing is, you know, it's a question, it's not a question of if, it's going to be when um, potentially your organization is, is going to be hit. And one of the, the main things they emphasize is obviously, it sounds just top of mind, is to test your backup procedures, you know, for critical data so you can restore that. Um, <clears throat> I know that from my experience as an admin, you know, sometimes new, you know, applications are built in and you forget to back them up or they're, they're not part of that process. But that's one of them. But also the second component to that, you know, um, that uh, guidance is ensure backups are isolated off the network. And that's what we're going to focus on today in our solution, Coast Fort Knox. And then, you know, why do we need to isolate data? <clears throat> Excuse me. You know, to, to follow the 321 rule, um, obviously the first one on the left is what we're, it's top of mind, right? You know, every 11 seconds an organization's hit, but you still need to plan for the other um, outages that can happen in your environment. Obviously natural disasters or type of um, outages, physical damage uh, to backup copies, as well as, you know, maybe some bad actors, a disgruntled employee or rogue um, code. You know, that happened to me when I was an admin, <clears throat> excuse me, um, where someone wrote a, a code and started deleting data and the recovery process was very long and arduous. You know, there's been multiple approaches to isolate your data. And, you know, obviously the main one that we see customers do is you have your primary location tape is traditional backup. Um, you know, the, the, the challenge with that, obviously, and we know a lot of organizations still do it, um, is it's very manual. You miss your SLAs in terms of backing up, in terms of recovery, and obviously it's not cloud ready. You know, organizations are 24 seven today. You know, they were um, 20 years ago, but not as much data as they used to have. <clears throat> and then, the second approach was creating like a self-managed data vault um, where you'd create an offsite copy. You'd have your network kind of up and down depending on um, when you wanted to protect the data and then recover it. But these are very complex. They're very hard to maintain. It's usually you building it with scripts around it and they weren't very flexible. Um, so, you know, <clears throat> as we talked to our customers and we looked at the, the industry, <clears throat> excuse me, um, data isolation, we wanted to make it easier and simpler. And, I'll show you that in, in our demo coming forward of how simple it can be, but we wanted to make it really easy for our for customers to have this solution. So this is where we introduced CoEC Fort Knox, a cyber vaulting and recovery as a service. Um, on your, uh, you deploy CoEC Data Cloud at your data center, the edge or in the cloud, and you write the data in a kind of dynamic connection and a virtual air gap into CoEC Fort Knox. So this is a leveraging AWS S3, there's multiple um, cold and hot, cold, warm and, and cold um, features that we provide um, and it's written into our account. So it's isolated from even your account um, and it's written into the, the vault um, for whatever duration you need based on your SLAs. And then the second part, you know, that we don't necessarily talk about so much is recovering data, right? Is making sure that if someone were to get access to the data that they, you know, can't bring it out of the vault. And so we have this, this concept of quorum, a quorum group. So anything that's recovered or cloned out of the vault, whether it's to the primary location or back to the alternate location, has to be approved by a set of users. So you know, protecting the data going in, we encrypt it in flight, we at rest, but also making sure that anyone who tries to get data out of there, if they were to penetrate your network or get your credentials, couldn't actually recover data unless it was approved, making sure that there's multiple ways to prevent data from getting to you know, uh, bad actors. And then obviously, you know, what kind of workloads can be vaulted into the, the vault as well as restored for it? And, and the, the answer is pretty much every workload. You know, you have your hypervisors, you know, VMware, Hyper-V, AHV, um, you have your NAS, um, your generic NAS, your NetApps, your Isilons, as well as, you know, your databases. So anything that's covered within this, and there's other additionals, as well as cloud native workloads, can be stored in that isolated vault outside of your environment. So a lot of flexibility there. And kind of talking about, you know, one of the, you know, I talked on that first slide about, you know, the challenges of, you know, um, management as well as cost is giving customers the option to choose the vault type or types that best fit their data. And what we have with Fort Knox is both a warm vault and a cold vault. And under the covers, you're using Amazon S3. Um, for the warm vault, it's IA, which is infrequent access. And then for the cold vault, it's Glacier. Um, in terms of features, they all work the same, whether it's, you know, a VMware workload or, or SQL, it all works that functionality, all the quorum works. Um, the difference is cost and duration. Um, 
So as you can see, the, the cost difference between a warm and cold vault um, is you know different. So you can have cost savings depending on what you are. Um, there is some minimum retention requirements, but for companies that have you know very long term retention, you know maybe seven years. I worked in the financial industry. You know you don't necessarily want to store all your data in kind of an expensive tier. You know that data that's maybe a year old or older or even 90 days older to seven years, you can still store in that offsite copy, but at a more cost effective solution. So a lot of flexibility in terms of how you can store your data. <clears throat> and the feature set between the same is is uh, is all the same, whether it's warm or cold. Um, so, <clears throat> And then uh, this highlights just where you can store your data. We have 13 regions today in AWS data centers worldwide. Um, you know, organizations are global today, um, or if they have data residency or data um, sovereignty issues um, or requirements, they can store them in the region that they want to. Or you know, maybe if you're a, a U.S. company and you want to store your data, you're in the West Coast, you want to store it in Oregon, gives you a lot of flexibility to deploy one or multiple copies in the region that you need that will satisfy your business requirements. And what's nice about the solution is, you know, these are 13 today, but we have the capability to, you know, add new regions based on customer demand. So a lot of flexibility, you know, what customers need to do um, in order to secure and, and store their data, you know, offsite. So kind of summary, uh, summarizing Fort Knox, you know, our Coasty Managed Cyber Vault as a service, it's simple managed service. And that first pillar is making it simple to do, just connect, vault, and recover. Um, now we're moving from a CapEx to an OpEx model. And that's what customers want to do is, you know, not necessarily <clears throat> not using tapes, not procuring the tape, the tape machines is moving that data, you know, to an OpEx model. And then having flexibility, right, with that cost factor is choice of stores tier to meet their RTOs and, and business SLAs, right? And then having a single UI to manage your entire environment. You know, we're focused on Fort Knox, but there's other solutions that we have if you're managing your, your cluster, all can be done in a single single pane of glass, uh, which makes, you know, the operational aspect very, very, um, very great. And then comprehensive security. Obviously, you know, meeting that virtual air gap network outside of your account um, in the Coist account, all isolated, you know, we're moving the data into the service. You know, it's encrypted um, immutability, both at the cluster level, but also within um, Fort Knox. We're leveraging AWS object lock to make sure that's retained for whatever time frame that you need, um, and it cannot be deleted before that. Um, encrypting, when you log in, there's role-based access control and multi-factor authentication. Um, and then quorum to, to uh, manage key um, actions like recovery. And then laying on top of that is we do machine learning so as data is written into the vault, we're looking at, you know, change data. And that's one of the things that you see when, you know, obviously a server has ransomware, they lock the files. Is there an increase in the size of the backup? So we notify you there. So try and be very proactive um, to reduce the likelihood of, you know, um, a, a ransomware attack. And then just being confident in your recovery, right? You know, easily identify where the clean copy is. You can go to different points in time, you know, meet the demand for your SLA. Um, but also, you know, you don't always need to recover, you know, a full virtual machine. Maybe the file and folders underneath of it is what you need to recover or NAS files. So a lot of flexibility there. So I'm going to go ahead and, and go through a, a, a demo. I'm going to go through the, the dashboard. Um, I'm going to show you how to create a vault and, you know, a policy and recover data all within this and a live demo. So here I have, uh, I'm logged into Coisi Helios, um, which is our control plane. This is where a single pane of glass where you can manage all um, Fort Knox, as well as all other services and applications that you have with Cohesity. And on the dashboard, what you'll see is it gives you a, a nice point of view of what is going on in your Fort Knox environment. On the top left here, we show how much data stored in my demo environment. I have two different tiers of AWS warm and cold, um, how much data I'm storing, and how much I have um, used. And depending, obviously, on the customer, you'll have, obviously, more capacity. You know, I'm in the demo environment, so I have 10 terabytes and five on cold. Um, but that gives you a, a general view of what's going on. Sometimes I call it my coffee cup, having a coffee. I can see what's going on. And I can drill in if there's things I need to investigate. Um, in terms of how many vaulting runs, I can kind of show, you know, on the right-hand side, you know, how many vaults, how many have succeeded, any failures. Like I said, I can drill into them. And, and if I scroll down a little bit, what you'll see is my topology. Oops. Um, and what I hear in the green is showing my clusters that are deployed in my environment, as well as the vaults that I've deployed and where I can store my data. And I'll kind of walk you through that. Here in, a, in a minute. And then finally, the objects, the type of objects. In this demo environment, I just have VMware, but I can have a NAS. I can drill into those and see what's going on. And then, you know, up the top right, um, 
I was talking about a single pane of glass. So if there's other applications, what I'll show you a little bit, I can quickly scroll into those and make it really easy. So that operational um, you know, efficiencies are really there. And then the left-hand side is you know, our navigation. So one of the first things you do, whether you're doing a trial or you're gonna deploy in your environment is to create a cloud vault. So if I expand my cloud vault on the left-hand side, I'm gonna click on my configuration. And what this shows you is all the vaults that I've created in my environment. Typically what you see in a customer environment is a handful. You don't necessarily see this many, but this is just a demo environment to show you all the different regions you have. And you can scroll up and you know, see what clusters are using them if there's any errors uh, going on. But I'm gonna quickly walk you through kind of how quickly and how simple it is to create a vault. So here, if I go to my create vault screen, it gives me the, 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 the wizard to do it. Here I'm gonna do, you know, um, I'm gonna create a, a region in US East um, 2 and, you know, vault 2. Um, I can rename it here. And here is my drop down. I'm going to select this um, kind of thinking about it. I'm going to do in Ohio. So selects my region and now the storage class. So you know, depending on how I deploy this, you know, I can do a warm, um, which is, you know, in um, S3IA and, or in cold and in glacier. So in this instance, I'm going to do cold. And then um, data um, in flight is encrypted, but also at rest. And so I can have Coisty manage these keys every time we're rotating keys and encrypting the data and unencrypting it, um, or I can bring my own key if I wanted to and, and have my own encryption key if I'm a AWS customer. So here in this instance, I'm gonna go ahead and use Coisty KMS, and then we're gonna go ahead and press create. So this will take you know a couple minutes. So that's what's really nice is you can deploy very quickly um, in the environment and it'll be up in you know, a couple minutes. So that's how you deploy um, a, a vault to start vaulting data into. So the next question is, how do I move data into that vault and start using it um, proactively? So from there, if I go to my protection, I'll click on my protection um, UI here. And so what this shows me is the activity, all of the protection groups that I am um, storing data in my vault and you know, which one it's storing to. And then um, in Coisty, what we have is a policy. And a policy dictates how often you want to protect the data, as well as how long and where you want to store it. So what, in order to start vaulting data into a vault, um, you'll just add it to a policy. So if I quickly go through on the right-hand side, let's go ahead and add a vault protection. And then these are the two clusters that I have configured in my environment. So I'm going to select this, this, uh, oops, this cluster, and then I'm going to select one of the policies. Um, you can have multiple policies. What we typically see customers do is they have different ones depending on you know type of data. And so in this environment, I have a, a tier zero policy is for my, my tier zero, maybe my Oracle databases, my, uh, some production virtual machines that are very, you know, um, I, I want a, a lower RPO, a recovery point objective, and a lower RTO, recovery time objective. And so that one, you know, is back up every four hours, is retained for two weeks on the cluster and then vaulted into here. And then this is maybe a second one that I'm gonna actually use and it's my tier one policy. So it's um, applications or VMs that, you know, I'm backing up once a day. Um, I'm gonna select that. And it's already assigned to a protection group, which is a set of virtual machines or applications that are protecting. I'm gonna press continue. But the next thing is I'm gonna do is, is select where I'm gonna vault it to. So here you can see the, all the vaults that I have. Um, and this is the vault that I just created. I can actually add that as well. But in this instance, you know, I'm gonna only store it for a certain amount of time and I want it in warm. And then I want to you know, um, store it in you know, my US West 2 vault. And then after, this is how often you want to vault into it. So typically you want to maybe after every backup, you know, vault the data into the, into the vault, or maybe you do want to do it once a week. You have that um, flexibility to do it based on your, your business requirements. And then you, obviously retention, um, you can change. I have a demo environment, so it's locked me to 30 days. Um, and all the data, like I said, is, is locked. Um, using AWS Object Lock. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that and then go ahead and press continue. So from from going forward, anything that uses that policy will start writing into the, the vault. So actually, let's go ahead and do that. Um, so if I navigate to my data protect, so this is how I can manage my, on, my on-prem clusters. This has another dashboard that gives you a summary. I'm gonna select the cluster that I just assigned that um, policy and that, uh, um, Vault 2. So if I expand my data protection, I'm going to go look at that policy that I, I have. It'll take a second to load. Um, and then what you'll see is uh, when I drill into it, you'll see that it has that Cloud Vault. That's a tier one. And so I'm going to go to my protection group that, I, that I, um, I'm using for that. And I'm just going to go ahead and you know, what we'll see is these objects 
Uh, but now it's there's no vault, right? The last backup was yesterday. So if I go ahead and run now, what you'll start seeing is um, it will vault, it'll back up a local copy and then go to the vault. So go ahead and run that. And then that's it. And going forward, anything that's added to using those policies um, will start backing up the data on the next subsequent backup and then vaulting it into the vault. So just like that, really easy to deploy and use. So I'm going to switch back to our security and go back to Fort Knox. So that's how you quickly can create a vault, be up and running very quickly, you know, versus when you think about tape, you have to configure it, go that way. But if you're also, if you're doing kind of your own vaulting solution, you have to update scripts and how quickly we, you know, we've been going through that process. So the next component is, you know, how do I recover data and make sure only the people that can recover data are, are allowed to do that? Um, and that's where we have um, our quorum. So you recover from this section, but I'll, I'll talk through security. Um, when we click on the quorum, quorum is obviously is, is kind of what it sounds like is in order to have, um, you know, uh, um, um, an activity kind of go like a recovery, um, you have to have approval from people in that quorum group. So here there's a couple of tabs if I'm, you know, doing requests, but let me click on the groups. Um, quorum group here in this scenario is a recovery group. So if I drill in on this recovery group, I'm going to edit and kind of show you what it looks like. Um, so here, you know, within the, the UI, there's three operations that, you know, anything that's recovered from the vault, including metadata, we talk about um, recovering to another environment, another cluster, you have to recover metadata, or even cloning. These are the operations managed by this group. And what you'll see is there's a group of four, and at least two people have to approve it. Um, and we'll click here really quick. And there's a couple of people, obviously, it's a demo environment. And so you can change this. You can have all members. So basically, once I go to recover something, based on this quorum group, it has to be approved by, in this case, two members of this group. Until that happens, nothing will be recovered. And I'll kind of show you that workflow. So that is the quorum group. And you can use this to do other things, you know, manage policy, you know, who can update them as well. And the nice part, too, obviously, is Someone will say, well, what if I just add myself to this recovery group? Any changes to recovery have to be approved by the existing members of the quorum. So a lot of security layers to make sure that no one, a bad actor, whether it's an internal employee or someone outside, can get to the data and recover it. So that's the quorum. Um, let's go ahead and kick off a recovery. Click in here. Like I said, all the different ways you recover data. In my instance here, I'm going to just recover a virtual machine. I'm going to select uh, one of my clusters that I'm going to do it for. And you know, here it's flipped me to the cluster, so I'm going to go ahead and select recover. So we can search for the particular virtual machine that I want to recover, or I can just do a wildcard. So here I'm going to select. Uh, I'm going to select this virtual machine, and by default, it's going to select the local one. But you know, if I want to recover from the vault, you'll see I'll select. And I can I can select different points in time based on you know, hey, someone gave me a ticket. I need you know, for, you know, March 25th at 8:17 p.m. I can go ahead and select that one. I go ahead and select. Next, I'll go to my recovery options, kind of your typical recovery. Um, you know, I want to go back to the location, how we want to recover it. And then if I want to make any changes here, I'm going to change it to, you know, recover from Fort Knox. This is going to be the new um, recover from Fort Knox. And then my power state and all those things. And so I'm going to submit that. And what you'll see is um, if I click in, my, my request has been submitted for approval. So if I go back to my, my Fort Knox screen here and I look into my recoveries, you'll see is nothing has started to recover. So when I go into my security here, um, I go into my quorum, what you'll see is the pending request, you know, my requests. And so here it's showing, you know, if I drill into this, I'm trying to recover this. And, and what's nice is the other members of the group We'll get a notification via email or, you know, they'll see it in their environment. But it's saying, hey, um, my user has submitted a recovery. It's pending. And because I'm a member of it, it's already approved it, um, you know, obviously. Um, and then it requires another approval. And so I'm also, because I'm in a demo environment, I have access to the other user. So I'm going to go ahead and flip over to the other screen. And so this is my other user in dark mode. And if I go into my security here, I go into quorum. Have been notified or you know, reached out internally, and it says, "Hey, there's a pending you know, operation here." And I'm looking at it. You know, we're communicating. Um, hey, this is the user that has requested this. Well, I can approve it or decline it. 
you know, um, you know, or I can investigate more um, in turn. So I'm going to go ahead and approve it, you know, uh, approved, you know, based on, you know, ticket number, you know, you know, one, two, three, four. And once I approve it, what you'll see is when I've, it's been accepted because it's two of two. Um, when I go back, I'm flipping back to my original user and I go into recoveries, what you'll see is the recovery will start kicking off. So, you know, really nice way to control data going in as well as data coming out is making sure that everything's secure. Um, the other thing too is when you log into CRI, there's multi-factor authentication. So a lot of security to make sure that it's isolated and away from any type of bad actors. Um, and also as part of the solution I kind of mentioned is we have anomaly detection. Here, if there was any anomalies present that it saw you know, a significant amount of changes, it would tag them here and then you can see when the last known group copy was. So a lot of efficiencies there. Um, as well as security, um, you know, audit logs. Um, you can see who's been logging in um, to the environment. You can set it to send the logs, um, you know, how long you retain it for. So you know, making sure that this environment is very secure and reduces the likelihood of anyone not supposed to get it um, to, uh, to, to make sure you're, you're logged. Um, and then the final kind of thing that I look at is, you know, making sure you have reporting. Um, you can click on these reports and see how much data is transferred. Um, just keep, you know, Coming from a financial industry, we got audited a lot. So they always want reports of things. So also provides that second layer of you know, information for um, customers um, to see what's going on in their environment. In a, you can schedule these as well. So that kind of concludes the demo, um, kind of gives you a very good overview of you know, the solution and what it can do and how quickly you can deploy it um, in your environment. So flipping back to my presentation, uh, you know, I've done that demo. Um, use cases, right? What are customers saying and, and how are they using it out in the field? And that's you know, um, what we like to show um, potential customers um, for the, the solution. So uh, the citizen Potawatomi nation you know, uses Fort Knox um, in order to protect their data. You know, what their challenge, if we look at it, was they wanted to adopt the, the CISA's recommendations and they needed to manage their backup infrastructure remotely. And so you know, they went with our solution because it provided that ransomware protection. Now we focus on Fort Knox, um, but also our cluster that does the protection, the data is immutable on it. You can create its own um, data lock on it as well. So there's localized copies. Um, you know, they want to be compliant with that 321 rule, three copies, two locations, um, and one for DR. So really simplify their solution. Um, and then really cost avoidance, you know, not having to maintain tapes or their own infrastructure offsite and then faster restores, right? You know, lever depending on when the data, it, it, you can use the cluster um, or obviously if it's, you know, coming from the vaults, you can recover that. And depending on the size of the data, it's very quick in, in your network connectivity. Um, and what we've heard a lot too is if customers, by having this isolated vault that's outside their environment, they, they can qualify for cyber insurance, you know, that another layer of protection and also reduce their, um, their insurance cost. So, you know, kind of what they said is, you know, it's the easiest way to maintain a secure offsite copy, very quick to do and simpler and less expensive. Um, so that's one of the use cases. The second one is, you know, Atlantic School District, um, the Clayton County Public Schools, you know, obviously as, as data, is, uh, back of infrastructure has changed and the amount of data you're ingesting has changed. They have, we're on a, a competitor solution. Um, just what they needed was faster protection. Um, and so they're able to do that more efficiently um, with VMware, with our solution, but also we're able to add Fort Knox to their environment so they can secure that critical data locally and, you know, remotely, obviously uh, isolated. Um, and then same thing, cybersecurity, you know, for data isolations. Um, and then we're able to, you know, clone data very quickly off our solution and improve backup time. So, you know, two, di two different types of efficiency they saw was from kind of their infrastructure and protecting data, but also you know, meeting that isolation. Um, so, you know, Fort Knox is a very, very quick and easy solution as you kind of saw is once you have everything deployed, you can create more and add different ones, um, you know, in your environment. So kind of what's the call to action here? Um, you know, how to get started. Uh, Coisy and AWS can help. You can reduce your data risk, optimize your costs and gain insight to your data. Um, the next steps, you know, is to complete the survey after this. Um, there is a free trial, you know, go to kwesi.com, free trial, and, and learn more with AWS. We have a very strong partnership with AWS. Uh, for customers who have an EDP, which is an enterprise agreement with them, um, we sell this in the marketplace so you can reduce on, your, uh, you put it towards your EDP. Um, so with that, I'll hand it back to Doug um, 
and you know we can go to the QA session. Yeah, great, Edwin. This is uh, this is great. Uh, I, I I love the way you broke it down. We would certainly encourage everybody to take a look at those next steps. Free trials always a good thing. Uh, we always encourage everybody to to engage. Um, simply put, it, there's no better way to find out how a solution is going to work for your particular environment than Definitely. to start to engage and, and ask questions. Um, and actually, one question I had uh, as I was listening um, mm -hmm. is: um, Does every server backed up to Fort Knox need the Cohesity agent installed? That's a good question, right? You know, and, and the, the the answer is no. Um, you know, we work directly with uh, you know VMware. We we talk directly to those hypervisors. Um, you know, even for Oracle and SQL, if you're doing native SQL dumps or native Oracle dumps, we can do that. Um, an agent can help depending on, on what your use case is, but it's not a requirement. So a lot of flexibility. I'm, I think that's what I'm trying to emphasize. A lot of flexibility of whatever your your organization uses today, we can use the same thing and then write it into that vault. So great question. Make it, make it simple. Yeah, well, if anybody, again, if anybody has any questions, by all means, send them along and and, uh, and I'll queue them up. I got a few um, mm -hmm. that I'll queue up right now. Um, can we use our own KMS? I, I'm, I'm assuming that's a key management system. Is that what that is? That's that's correct. And, and yes, you definitely can. So obviously, we use a key management system in, in order to encrypt the data. So you have your own keys. Um, you can use it in both. So there's two kind of kind of when you, in the architecture there's the Fort Knox part and then we have the cluster. Um, so at the cluster level and on prem or wherever you have it, you can use your own KMS um, or you can use ours. And then kind of what I showed in the demo, yes, you can use bring your own key with the KMS. So making sure that you manage those keys. Um, so definitely a lot of flexibility. Yes, you can bring your own your KMS system. Management system. As everybody would ask in a uh, cloud. Um, software as a service environment. Um, the question is, does it mean that there are no associated egress costs? That's a great question because, you know, <clears throat> the cloud is very fun and very, you know, can do a lot of different things. But whenever you bring data out of, you know, AWS or any other cloud provider, they charge you. In this solution, we're covering those costs. There's no egress charges, um, you know, out of the service. So it's all inclusive. So whether you recover, you know, a terabyte of data or 100 terabytes of data, it's all part of the service. So we make it really simple and, and cost effective. The whole move to the cloud has been amazing to watch. Um, we Definitely. saw a lot of resistance uh, initially uh, early on as, uh, but, but, it's, but it's fascinating. I think since the pandemic and since, I think maybe some of the more legacy uh, decision makers have started to, to move out. Um, there's definitely a much more modern approach now to to cloud, um, cloud hosting, cloud applications, certainly cloud backup uh, and recovery. Um, definitely, and 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 it, and, it, and it brings a lot of a lot of other questions into play. Um, okay. One that we got here: uh, What prevents a bad actor from accessing the Fort Knox data while the virtual air gap is open? That's a great question. Actually, I didn't even show that, and that's a, a perfect question. Is you, you can you can have a window when date when your data is written there, and so you can limit to like after hours. But that's a fantastic question because um, you know how you know if that window is open, you know it's like you open the window to your house. You know things can get in, right? And so um, to reduce that factor or actually prevent it from happening between our control plane and our uh, SaaS environment, it's communicating with the cluster and it has encryption keys. Um, in terms like handshakes. So even if a, a you know, bad actor got a hold of a cozy cluster and tried to connect it, it wouldn't be able to because of those keys that's communicating between the cluster and the service. Um, so that reduces the likelihood of anyone really writing data into the service as bad. Um, so there is that hand, there's a handshake under the covers that's communicating to make sure that you know, it is the correct cluster. Uh, but very good question. Um, you wanna make sure you're, you're trying to limit as you know, any type of opening into your data. So great question. Well, I'm curious. Um, and maybe this is not a great question, but uh, no. I'll ask it anyway. How long does it take to restore um, something that's been backed up to Fort Knox to kind of another cloud or 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 just restore it? It's always a valid question, right? Because that's what, you know, you deploy a solution. They're not like, well, you know, it obviously there's a cost to it, but, you know, how can I get data quickly? And, and it obviously it's kind of, a, you know, it's, 
it depends on how much data you, you use, um, but it can be done very quickly. I mean, I think what you saw in that in my environment is I was recovering, depending on which tier, obviously, if you're doing warm or cold, right, there's gonna be a recovery time objective of how long it takes. So from a cold perspective, it'll take at least four hours to get the data out because it's got to hydrate. You're in a, you're in a less expensive storage, but you know recovery time is really dependent on the amount of data. It can take minutes depending on how much data or seconds, it's just or, or hours um, depending what you have. Um, so hopefully that answered it. But it just depends on the amount of data. But because it's a network to network, um, and we you know it's all the encryption and approval process, it can be done relatively quickly. Um, you know so. And I think people use it for disaster recovery. Obviously, I think there's different tiers. My background's DR as well. So if, you, if you're looking for like a zero RTO or recovery time objective, obviously not the solution to do it. But you know, anything longer that we can recover the data very quickly. So yeah, yeah, I, 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 and I appreciate the answer. And, and and my question was a little clunky, but um, uh -huh. I had to ask. It always, uh, it's, I think it's important, right? You know, there's <laughs> never a bad question, right, and never a dumb question because. These are things you want to know before you, re you deploy a solution, right? I mean, is it going to take me two weeks, right? Yeah, yeah, no, I, I, yeah I, exactly. I think everybody's kind of like, yeah, how long does it take? And, and actually, <laughs> you know, a question I always ask of, of, of all the folks that come on our spotlights is, mm -hmm. uh, is how, does it, how does it work when somebody, for instance, goes to cohesity.com and clicks on a free trial or um, get a demo? I mean, what does the engagement start to look like uh, for somebody? That's a great question. So you go to the free trial, you sign up, it'll be notify our internal team and they'll reach out to the, the team. Um, with Fort Knox, um, you know, we'll, we'll, the a demo can be done very quickly. They'll assign a, a person to show you a demo. Obviously you've seen the demo, um, but then a, an account team will work with them and set up a time to deploy, you know, our cluster as well as kind of deploy the, uh, the, the environment. So, um, It'll be a very quick process, and I think it's working with our internal teams to to set it up. But hopefully, that answers your question. I don't know the full process, but that's how it typically. Works. <laughs> yeah, no, I I, I love uh, again um, when one of the best parts of being solutions review is we get to speak to all the solutions, and and it's very comforting um, to know that for the most part. Um, you can't really be an enterprise technology solution of any note, certainly not one as successful as Cohesity, without having a fairly bulletproof history of uh, of performance. And so, for us, it's it's you know the the due diligence aspects are minimal because you know there's just multinational corporations all over the world that are putting you through your paces. And so, when I ask these questions, it's more. Um, you know, rudimentary, I think, than what you probably are typically asked <laughs> from oh. from folks that are trying to get to the to the uh, heart of the matter. But um, but All but valid. a question we All did valid. get yep. with with uh, with regard to cohesity and, mm -hmm. and and obviously the the level of of sophistication and 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 uh, compatibility. Um, everybody has, you know, complex systems, particularly mm -hmm. the larger organizations. Um, how does Fort Knox work? Does it only work with Cohesity systems, or does it work across, you know, multiple other systems with connectors? I mean, how, how does that all come together? Yeah, it's a great question. And so, um, obviously, we need the Cohesity cluster to move the data into Fort Knox. But from a protection perspective, backup and recovery, we can back up, you know, different types of data very easily. So, you know. Um, and most of them don't need agents. I know we talked about it at the beginning. One of the big things is a QA is is you need to deploy agent. But if you're backing up like a file share, a Windows server, those those do need the agents. But um, you know VMware, um, we can ingest all that data and then we'll move it into the the, the service. So you know um, we have a lot of kind of um, applications that we support as well as infrastructure that we can protect agentless or with an agent. Um, and move it into the service. But you do obviously do need kind of the data mover, which is our cluster, um, which is you know what we saw in those use cases, they use it to back up locally. And that's usually where you recover from unless you have to you have an event and you recover from the, the vault or it's a long-term thing. So um, we have a variety of kind of solutions that can protect the data on-prem or in the cloud and then move into the service. Yeah, so um, I wanna, I wanna uh, kind of get your perspective on things because you've, been at Cohesity for 
uh, almost five years now, and, and you also uh, have seen a thing or two outside of Cohesity, and you've certainly seen, you know, how data backup protection recovery has evolved, and now with, you know, obviously this massive um, outbreak of ransomware. What advice would you would you give to somebody who may be thinking they might not be completely covered that they they put something together i mean what should they be thinking about as they start to consider going to the next level and and considering cohesity uh that's a, that's a great question is you know, it's march madness season i'm a like a, a you know one of the quotes i like to think about is coach wooden said is failing to prepare uh, is preparing to fail right is you have to be prepared and you may have a solution today but is it a solution that's going to work for you kind of in the future as you grow because you know, data is growing. Um, so the first thing I would say is, you know, look at us and look at how easy it was to deploy and manage. How's that compared to your existing solution? You know, like you said, like you emphasize is look at the free trial and see if it meets your, your business needs, but also your cost needs, but also to kind of think forward in that first slide, that statistic about the number of ransomware attacks, which is mind boggling to me is like every 11 seconds today, every two seconds in the future. Um, one of the things also I, I remember seeing is, you know, a lot of these, because evolution, the evolution of ransomware has occurred, you know, like it's you know, more sophisticated is they'll come in, they'll penetrate a network and be in their network 100 plus days, you know, which is really interesting. It used to be like they'd come in, they would lock your data, you have to recover. Now they're penetrating networks um, and then looking for ways to, to, you know, lock data, but also delete backups. And that's why we want there. But kind of to go back to your question is, is, is what is the solution what are you trying to do if you look at that CISA require the kind of go governance that um, the government has, US government has said, um, is make sure you're, you're planning for the future. And I think what Port Knox gives them is, you know, the ability to grow into the solution, make it very quick and easy to do. Um, but just assess what you're doing. Maybe tapes may be a solution today, but is it going to be for, for the future? Or if you have your own solution, who's managing it and how, how much risk there is to, you know, scripts or something like that. So, you know, be prepared. You know, I think that's unfortunately where we're at today. And you need those multiple levels. Like, and I think one of the things I like to emphasize is Fort Knox isn't the, it doesn't solve all of your problems. It helps you with, to defeat all these different risks that you have. You have a firewall, you have a CM and XDR. Now we all work together because we have to, you know, that's the thing that you think about, um, you know, and we've done it like a technical alliance with all these partners. Cause we know we do something good or great. Other companies do other things great. So if we can work together and have multiple layers, it's like you have your house, you have your door, you have your locks, you have your windows, you have your security system, you have your dog. And all those things help to prevent, you know, and then you have your insurance. So hopefully that answers your question um, about, you know, what to plan for in the future. Yeah, tip of the hat, by the way, to to whoever decided to name it Fort Knox. Uh, I, I can't <laughs> believe that uh, that name was lying around. Uh, a good job uh, snagging that. Um, I think it, it, it does a pretty good job of explaining the uh, the concept and 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 with regard to that, um, mm -hmm. everybody's trying to break into Fort Knox, right? That's that's the whole thing. It goes back to right. you know, the days of James Bond. Uh, yep. And 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 <laughs> and I'm curious um, how you guys stay on top of this. So obviously with AI and and everything that we're seeing and and we just. Uh, had a podcast the other day where uh, we had someone um, talking about how AI is just going to absolutely transform the sophistication of attacks. Um, how do you guys stay on top of that sort of thing and how do you integrate that learning into um, not only the solution but into the client knowledge base? That's a great question and I think that's true. Like you know, my 25 years in the business, you see things have changed <laughs> dramatically from like hypervisors to risk. Um, so, you know, we're, we're leveraging machine learning, um, obviously to kind of see that's kind of one layer. Machine learning was kind of the thing. Now it's AI. So we have uh, we have a new solution that we, we, we do called Gaia. So that's going to do data insights for customers, but also we're going to do operational insights. Um, so using AI to help look at, you know, data as it's coming in, you know, at the at both at the cluster level as well as within the service. Um, and then internally just having make sure having following the same checks and balances that 
as a customer does, right? You know, following all those rules, making sure that no one in our team has access, you know, to reduce that, but also, you know, making sure that you're constantly, you know, working with our partner AWS, um, you know, where, where our, our security partners to make sure even our environment is audited and making sure that we have all the things to do. So I think we're proactive and customers have to be proactive, but I think, you know, using all the tools that we have available, um, whether it's AI or machine learning or, um, you know, outside audit, just making sure that everything is secure um, because, you know, everyone's trying to break in, whether it's in Fort Knox or just in any service um, to kind of get, get to your code set or, you know, into the service um, is, is using everything possible um, and working with our partners um, to, to make sure that we do it properly. Yeah, and you mentioned Gaia. I don't want to um, go down that path too far, but I do want to point it out because it's interesting. You've got it on uh, on the Cohesity.com website. Uh, this is an AI optimizer for uh, folks who can bring their um, their data. I mean, it can find insights within the data. What is Gaia? <laughs> yeah, no, no. It's, I know it's kind of a, a little off topic, but you know, AI is top ransomware is top of mind. AI is top of mind. You know, those two things. Um, so it's our our rag. It's our um, and so what it does is it's leveraging AI under the covers. And the, the first release is it's using getting insight on customer data, right? One of the kind of the things that customers are always looking for is I have the second set of data. Yeah, I use obviously use it for the three, two, one rule to protect and recover, but what can I do with this data? And that's what the first kind of release of AI is, or of Gaia is, is giving them insight into the data. So I have my VM data, I can do searching of it. And you know, typically it's kind of a, when you do a search, um, it's like a text level search, right? You're doing like, you know, search for, you know, cohesity in this file. It's just going to give you cohesity. With with AI, it's getting that next level where you're having a conversation with the data and it's presenting the data. And so the first kind of um, release with Gaia is, you know, looking at insights within your data. So it's, we started with M365. We're going to have other data as well. Um, so getting insight into your data and using it, you know, that first pillar, you be more efficient with what you, your data has. You know, obviously it's not real-time data, but you have other things that, but I have this whole set of seven years, a financial company, I think they have 25 years of data. You know, what can you do with that data to make it more valuable to you? So that's the first kind of more data insights. And then there'll be operational insights of leveraging you know, AI to make sure you're operationally efficient, both us internally, but also as, a, as an organization. Everyone's, you know, reducing costs and trying to do more with less. So I think that that's kind of where Gaia is in stands. Yeah, and I, and I and I I don't want to go too far off topic. We'll we'll have Great. you guys back, uh, and we'll get into all the uh, all the other fancy things that Cohesity is up to. Right, um, and that's just a teaser, this, right? You know, yeah, yeah that, that's right, that's right. You know, Stay tuned for the next exactly. episode. And, and like you saw in my UI, I, sorry, I keep interrupting, you, but in that same UI, you would just go into Gaia and have it there. So the single pane of glass to manage everything, whether it's your cluster or Fort Knox security center, all those things, one place, so. Yeah, it's fascinating. Uh, and and uh, and like I said, uh, congratulations on on uh, Fort Knox and, and all that you're doing with regard to the ransomware protection solution. Um, and, 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 and again, we, we've been following Cohesity for a long time. It's, uh, it's, it's a pleasure to have you guys in our spotlight. Um, we have really enjoyed it. We think this has been a, a very valuable time. Um, Edwin, thanks very much uh, for the presentation. Very much appreciated and best of luck uh, for the rest of the year. Thank you, Doug. And it's been a pleasure uh, presenting to you, talking to you and presenting our solution. So there you have it, another solution in our spotlight. We want to thank Edwin and Cohesity for that presentation. And we appreciate your attendance as well. Until next time, I'm Doug Atkinson here at Solutions Review. Thanks for watching.